Welcome to the Magnify Your Miracles podcast. This is Reverend Francis Faden, and I am so grateful that we get to spend our time together helping you to magnify your miracles. Today, we have such a special guest to share with you, somebody who's going to help you really tap into your inner magic so that you can more easily magnify your miracles. But before I introduce her and all of that, let's take a few deep breaths together and just get ourselves grounded and centered. Hit it. If you're driving, please keep your eyes on the road, but you can always bring your awareness to your breath. And as we allow ourselves to just create a little space within ourselves to receive this beautiful inspiration that we're going to be having today, notice that we already can feel the energy of divine presence making itself known, supporting us and loving us and really helping us to move forward in whatever way is best for us. And as we know, Whatever you need to hear today to help you magnify your miracles is exactly what you're going to be hearing. Let's take one more deep breath together in gratitude, and we can begin. All right, my friend. Well, welcome once again to the Magnify Your Miracles podcast. I am so grateful to have you here. If you tuned in last week, you'll know that I did a book review on this amazing book, Spells for Living Well um, by Phyllis Grott. And I told you that we would be having her today and we do. So I'm so excited to share this beautiful author and just a bright light on the planet who has been here doing just such great work for a long time, really comes from her heart. So let me introduce you to Phyllis, a spiritual pioneer. Phyllis Grott is an attorney, a writer, and one of America's first public witches. Her five international best-selling books have been published in 14 languages, making her the most widely published author, the widely published Wiccan author. She's an outspoken advocate in the courts and media. She's handled or consulted groundbreaking cases, securing the legal rights of witches, including cases of child custody, religious assembly, organization, expression, and free speech. Phyllis was named one of the 10 gutsiest women of the year by Jane magazine and inducted into the Martin Luther King Jr. Collegium of Clergy and Scholars. She received the 2018 Service to Humanity Award from the One Spirit Interfaith Seminary and the 2020 Person of the Year Award from Kindred Spirit. Phyllis was the first Wiccan trustee of the Parliament of World Religions and was elected vice chair of the 2015 Parliament, creating the Women's Assembly and served as the program chair for the historic 2021 parliament, attended by Patriarch Bartholomew of the Eastern Orthodox Church and blessed by Pope Francis. New York Magazine has called her teaching on witchcraft, the culture's next big idea, and Time Magazine has published her as one of America's leading thinkers. Her YouTube series, which I highly recommend that you check out on, um, on YouTube on Wicca, has almost 3 million views. And Phyllis continues to teach, write, and lecture internationally on the embodied spiritual wisdom, which we're going to be talking about, the embodied spiritual wisdom of Mother Earth, nature's secret magic, and why the world needs its witches. All right, Phyllis, welcome, welcome. It is such a joy to be here. Huge. We have all the, it turns out we have all these friends and folks in common. And and I, I without even knowing that, I was really looking forward to this conversation today. So, and just to tell people who are listening and weren't watching why you laughed, I, I did my <laughs> pose of that little girl who, you know, who has her cape and is like, what go out into the world as a superhero when you were giving my credits. I love it. I love it. So beautiful. Well, thank you for being here. I know you have so many things going on. And I always like to ask my guests, the very first question is your definition of a miracle. What's your definition, Phyllis? Oh, gosh. I, <laughs> I'm speechless, um, which is rare. I didn't think about miracles for a long time because they always felt like they came from a different cultural framework, right? That a miracle, the way I thought, past tense, the way I thought of a miracle was in the the that cultural framework, that it was something that God did, uh, usually for or with or in the presence of somebody very, very, very special, like a saint, right? Right. 
that and that's what a miracle was it was it was somewhat supernatural it was god's intervention to make something extraordinary happen that couldn't happen in any other way mm -hmm. um, but you had to be very very special for it to happen um it wasn't something that happened to ordinary people right yeah and so it, it, it i i was a raised as a sort of a, an ethic in an ethical humanist uh, household um my mother's background was jewish my father's was a mixture of lutheran and catholic but they were not religious folks but they were deeply spiritual and profoundly moral they were social justice activists really right old. right so I had a framework for any of that stuff and then magic started happening and and then the culture started changing and i think especially women started waking up to the fact that Miracles were possible for all of us. Yes. So your definition. Um, before we started, I asked you, well, what's your definition? And and you said it was something extraordinary uh, that you didn't expect, that you didn't think could happen, that happens. And in fact, that the world is full of miracles. And when I heard that, I said, ah, and that's how I think of magic. Yep. The world itself is magic and that it's happening all the time inside of us and all around us. And that our work, our spiritual work is about sort of getting the blindfold off, certainly to me as a witch, which mm -hmm. means a wise one. It's a 5,500 year old word. It goes back to the shamanism, the indigenous wisdom tradition of our Western ancestors. Yeah. meant a wise one, witcha, W-I-C-C-E. It meant a wise one, a seer of the sacred, a shaman basically. And um, and it included women. Wicca was women. Wicca was men. Um, and they were our our ancestral healers, our wise ones, the ones who knew that spirit and world were one, and they knew how to move back and forth between them, and how to hold them together, and how to help the community, their villages, their people, to experience that unity, that oneness of life, that sacredness of life. Yeah. That connection to spirit, to sake, to the sacred, that unlocks the magic. Right, that's that's what, it. That's what gets it flowing. So magic is something that you can do, but it's something that the world is already doing. And so it's something you get to participate in. I and love that the world's already doing it, and you get to participate in it. So fun. Yeah, fun, and it is very much. Um, in fact. Before we started, I shuffled my tarot deck, the witch's right. wisdom tarot deck. Right. I, what is the card? What do we need to know about Francis? And oh, was, great. Oh, this is juicy. Right? Let's go. <laughs> and what came up for those of you who are watching this, you can say Eight of Fire. Is that what it says? Yep, Eight of Fire. Uh -huh. And this little family of eight baboons on a hilltop. Look, there's a river beneath them. And yeah. they are watching the sunrise. And this is um, ancient and, in fact, real, that these baboons and other monkeys uh, throughout Africa will gather. They're still doing this. They've been doing this for thousands of years. They will gather before sunrise in a high place. They all get together and they sit and they wait. And they're waiting for the sun to come up. And when the sun comes up, they start cheering. They get up and they wave their arms and they're yelling and they're screaming and they're carrying on. They're so excited that the sun has come up and it's up in the sky. And one turns to the other and says, how are you doing? And he says, that was fantastic. And he says, I know it was great, right? He says, you ready to go? Like, okay, let's get started. And they go off to the business of the day. And then the next dawn before the sun, they were all there together waiting for the sun to come up. And the wow. sun comes up, you know, and they're like carrying on like, wow. they've seen it, like they've never seen it before, right? Like they're seeing it for the first time. This is their ritual of wow. magic. Do they think that they are bringing the sun up through their joy, through their uh, companionship by being there to witness it? Or do they know that they're simply in the presence of a daily miracle that they rejoice in receiving? Ah. Uh, doesn't matter. It's both, right? Um, and they're wise, right? They're wise. They're attending to the magic of creation that we've cut ourselves off from. 
So that's your work with this podcast. That's my work. I bet you that's the work of most of the uh, folks who listen. We're listening. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's so significant for me for a lot of reasons. Cause well, first of all, I, I randomly opened your book just before we got on and I was like, Oh, I wonder what. And I opened it up to the fire spell for energy. So there's the fire energy. And then just yesterday I was listening to something that was, I think it was a podcast about the black Madonna and they were talking about the eight pointed star. And I was like, Oh, the number eight and the eight pointed star is the star of Venus, which is the divine feminine divine mother. And I've been wondering about those eight points because there's the eight seasonal points that we celebrate. So I was like, oh, it's all starting to come together. So then you pick this card and here we go. Yes. And on my sitting on my Sono speaker in the corner of my desk is a little statue of Isis mm-hmm. and a statue of the Black Madonna that I got when I was in Montserrat mm-hmm. as one of the ancient Black Madonnas who is connected to the goddess Isis and um, much of the magic uh, carried by the Romani people, otherwise referred to as gypsies, Mm -hmm. that has survived uh, the witch craze and uh, the oppression of the old wisdom traditions of the divine feminine of the goddess, um, of the witches, W-I-C-C-E, the wise ones of our ancestors, but it survives and she is really returning. And as one of the reasons I was excited to talk to you is that about your experience, I was so interested in your experience of having encountered um, the, the uh, mother Mary. And I was wondering, I, I, I was like pulling out my, my Madonna statues. And I was like, Nope, the one I want for this is the black Madonna. Uh-huh. You're, you're talking about her. Yeah. This is what magic is. The magic and miracles are that they're the same, aren't they? They're the same. Yep. Yeah. That's the thing that, I, that I've seen. I mean, to me, and I'm curious to see if this is what you think, but for me, they're kind of opposite sides of the same coin. I see it as like magic is a little bit more, I guess, maybe working with intention or, or like getting yourself into that state. And then the miracles is the receptivity, like allowing yourself to receive the grace, but it's the same, no matter, that's how I look at it. I don't know if that's how you'd say it. Yeah, I think that's true. And to some extent, but I think magic is, I think magic is actually more in harmony with both the active and the receptive. Yep. I think Um, you're right. Yeah. There is an active principle and that's what most of us think of magic as because it survived through the repressions, through ceremonial magic and things that men were doing, which was the wizard, right? That Mickey Mouse in Fantasia, where he goes to, you know, the wizard is sleeping and he takes, he yeah, book and he chants the little spell and he makes the broom do his work for him. And then it gets right. out because he doesn't know what he's doing. And that's how we think of magic as a way of controlling. Exactly. Uh, and make bending unseen forces to our will. You'll find that in a lot of books by young yep. folks who are fascinated by this, but haven't had proper training. Right. When you start to do this work, and certainly I think that was a part of my early training when the goddess truly, it was Isis, led me to this hidden coven of witches in New York, which was, I, it could not have been the, I mean, it was the last place in the world I could ever imagine myself, but it was where the goddess was returning um it it was the place uh it was witches really and then some goddess spirituality began to emerge people like gene boland and others but initially it it was the witches the modern um the modern version of witches who were trying to rediscover um and recreate and reimagine um and rebirth these ancient wisdom traditions. And because I think it, so many of us who were engaged in this, not all women, but mostly women, very gradually, it became quite clear that magic wasn't this effort to manipulate and control unseen forces or the world or nature for your personal gratification, you know, to, to chant mm-hmm. the spell, or 
grind the ingredients and do it at the right time of day and pull the lever and you know right cosmic vending machine will give you a boyfriend you know it, right <laughs> it, it was like it was uh, these are ancient ways wise ways that open your heart and your consciousness to the divine to realms of spirit that permeate the natural world that are embodied by the natural world that has its own sacred and holy wisdom that we have lost touch with right mm. that we have lost connection to that we have lost the ability to see to recognize uh, to learn from to live in harmony with and magic then becomes the means by which we become profoundly receptive we open ourselves to this flow of the divine and and like vessels like the holy grail our hearts open our minds open and it pours into us and the first thing magic changes is you. Mm -hmm. And as it changes you, then the art, the craft of magic right, um, becomes available to you. You learn from the natural world how to work with it, how to craft that energy. You learn from spirit how to work with it and how to work with it to create and shape your life to find your purpose, to find your gifts, your capacity, to find the reason that you're here, the thing that gives you joy mm -hmm. in the doing. And that becomes an offering. That becomes your magic. Your life becomes your magic. And what you create is your magic. And it makes your life better. And it makes the world a better place for your having been here. And it turns out that's nature's magic. There is this organizing principle. This was my revelation. Like, you know, we have these, I think when we're open and asking, the divine is so happy to have our present. To, you know, I mean, we're the children of, of spirit and creation, right? And, and it's thrilled to have us come home. Right. Right. And it wants us to be in relationship with us. And as soon as we ask it, it's, it, you know, it, it spreads a table with bounty, you know, and, and oh, I love that us, blesses us in all these beautiful ways. And it shows us how it makes magic, how spirit makes magic through creation and through us and how to work with the seasons, to work with the lunar tides, to work with the wisdom of medicine plants, how animals can teach us. You start to come into what native peoples and some Buddhists have called right relationship, right? Mm -hmm. um, and your life gets easier and you're able to work with these energies and your own to give shape and form to them, to direct them into a healthier and happier life that makes the world a better place, which that's nature's magic, that all living things, when taking good care of themselves as they instinctually know how to do it because it's in encoded in their blueprint. Like my dog, Foxy, knows how to be a healthy, happy Karen, right? She knows exactly how to do that. When nature, all of the parts of nature, plants, animals, when they're taking good care of themselves, as they know within themselves how to do, it turns out that the effect of their self-care is that they make the world that they live in healthier, better for all life. Mm -hmm. That's nature's magic. It's an extraordinary thing. It's, it was given to me as a gift in a revelation. And when I was studying with mother earth, asking for her blessing and her teachings and, and it was confirmed by biologists who specialize in biomimicry and studying how nature does things. And they discovered this, principle which they were Janine Benrus in particular called it nature's secret nature's magic and I came upon her purely by quote accident of course I was guided to her and she articulated exactly what I had been shown that there is an organizing principle at the heart of nature 
that all living things, when taking care of themselves as they know how to do, make the world in which they live better for all life. Their behavior creates, she does it in more scientific terms, healthy air, healthy water, healthy balance of gases, healthy salinity or not, healthy soil, healthy temperature. They contribute to the environment in which they live and make it better for all life. Well, there you go. I mean, it's a profound spiritual principle. It's a profound moral principle. And it's a profound practical organizing principle for how Mother Earth, spirit embodied by Mother Earth, has created and nourished life for six billion years. The greatest miracle of all, the greatest magic of all, life. And beauty, right? The beauty in and life. the beauty. Which is not to say there aren't pandemics and mosquitoes and right, you know, right. menopause and arthritis right. and, you know, terrible, difficult things because it's a closed system, right? But life is recycled. And all the constituent parts of a life go into the next round of life, nourishes and creates. So life it, life itself is perpetual. And the spirit also is eternal. There's real magic. It's somehow after we incarnate, we seem to have this blessing of continuity beyond the container, beyond the immediate life in which we have come into being. You know, it's so interesting when I'm hearing you. Th thank you for all of that. It's so but beautiful. I, thank you for joining. Um, <laughs> and um, when I was listening and I'm like, yeah, your dog knows how to be like the healthy version of your, what happened with all of us where it's like most people, if you ask them, well, what is, you know, how do you take care of yourself? People are fumbling around trying to figure out how to take care of themselves and my Ayurveda teacher had said, you know, the more you study nature, the more you learn about your own nature. And that's what I was wondering is like, what is your thought about this idea of how, how do we take care of ourselves? How do we step into being the wise one that we already are? Um, it's a wonderful question. And different faith traditions have different ways, different mm -hmm. modes, different means, practices. I always encourage people to find practices that work. Um, I mean, we don't want to engage in cultural appropriation. And that's one of the things about uh, the craft of the wise that appealed to me was I discovered, oh, this is our indigenous wisdom tradition. So I don't have to go looking elsewhere to find right. this innate wisdom, right? Um, which brought me then increasingly into the company of other indigenous peoples and other faith traditions. The gifts of this particular tradition I think are very much this uh, spiritual practice or practices that enable you to literally take the blindfold off and experience just as you were told by the, your Ayurvedic teacher, teacher that we are air, we are water, we are fire, spirit, we are utterly the earth. Uh, and all of creation, air and water and earth and energy and all the other children of Mother Earth with whom we share the planet, we are all interwoven in these mutually sustaining ways, these blessing ways. I went through a deep depression um, about 15 years ago partly due to this revelation of nature's magic, that all things are meant to be healthy and happy and know how to be healthy and happy and to make the world a better place. And when I looked at the world that we had created and I saw the damage we were doing and this crisis that was juggernauting towards us or that we were rushing mm -hmm. towards and the complete unconsciousness and the entrenchment of power in the hands of a half a dozen psychopathic males, right? There because of thousands of years of systems that reward yeah. this dominating 
pathology um, that will not relinquish power, right? I got scared and I got deeply depressed and I felt completely disempowered. And I was like, how can one person possibly affect any kind of change? Mm. So vast, so global, so massive mm. and so rapidly expanding. And and I the the struggle was with myself, right? And finally, after a few years, Mother but Mother Earth, Mother spoke to me. I was sitting in my garden and I had made a journey all over the world, all over. And I'd come back home and I felt no better. I still felt inadequate mm. and uncertain. And she said, listen, if you're not up to this task of sharing what I've shown you, nature's magic, and therefore your own and everyone's, which is what's needed now to heal what you all have broken, right? To come back into harmony, to see the way home. I'll just go to someone else. And I was like, no, no, I promised. I promised. I, I'm <laughs> whole and I don't know how to get out of this. Yeah. This sorrow and heartbreak. And, and I don't know. I don't even know what word. I, you know, I don't know what word. And she said, just breathe. Just breathe. And I, I was very touched by your brief prior of, of the time you spent in an ashram. Um, I, my spiritual journey had begun when I was a teenager practicing yoga. Mm -hmm. And so, and we always breathed at the beginning of circles, always mm -hmm. to quiet and calm and connect us. And I hadn't been breathing. So I had trouble, uh, you know, <laughs> and, and I, She's like, just breathe. Gradually, my breath, you know, normalized and then became a good meditative breath. And I felt myself growing quiet and still and calm and calm in a way that I hadn't been in a very long time and peaceful. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, see, I could have been doing this. But in that calm and quiet space, there was this moment of this little panic. Uh, yes, but nothing has changed. And in that moment, I inhaled and I was like, exhale your tension, just exhale that fear. And I was exhaling it. And suddenly I heard all this laughter and like, where is that coming from? Inside, outside, you know, when you do mystical work or right? inside, mm -hmm. out, there is no, you know, inside, outside. Um, and I realized it was the trees. And they, were laughing. Mm. they were laughing at me and they said stop doing that and I said stop doing what and they said stop breathing out your garbage there's no garbage oh. don't do that yeah I was like uh and I said just breathe in we have a gift for you and I took a deep you know I was breathing and they said no pay attention breathe in the gift that we have for you and I inhaled and I felt not just clean air and calm and peace and quiet. I felt their blessing. Mm. I felt their laughter. I felt their healing wisdom. I felt their incredible patience. I felt their them. I felt their energy. Oxygen is their blessing. They create it. And it is their gift. It's not a waste, right? They metabolize it. Mm -hmm. Live. And they bless us with it. And in it came with all this sense of grace and wonder and, and magic and miracles. And it flooded through me. And my heart opened. I started crying with joy. And I exhaled this, all of that and realized I was exhaling the gift of life for them, that my body metabolized the breath of life for them. Mm. I sat there and breathed with them. I don't know how long, I have no idea. Um, receiving the breath of life and returning the breath of life and experiencing physically the revelation 
that had been shared with me years before, that everything's interconnected and interdependent. And that when we take care of ourselves, just breathe, right? Just breathe. When we're taking care of ourselves properly, don't eh, your garbage. <laughs> Exhale the blessing that you create, the life that you create for the green plants of mm. which are the foundational beings of all life that give themselves. They're the first in the chain of food and medicinal everything right and psychotropics alter you know everything and they give themselves to us when you breathe when you bring your mind when you pay attention to what's actually happening in that exchange of the breath of life you you are participating in nature's magic it's not an idea it's not a goal it's not an aspiration the divine is, I used to say the divine is a breath away because I would do breathe and be quiet. And now we would do guided visualization or we mm -hmm. would just breathe and you're participating in the divine flow of life back and forth. You're mm -hmm. exchanging it. You're participating. You're a part of it. You're needed. You're appreciated. You're supported, you're given back to as you give. And I do that not as often as I should, but a couple times a week for sure. And always, if there's a crisis pending, mm -hmm. I sit. you can do it inside. You could do it in, in a jail cell where you haven't seen the light of day in, you know, whatever it is. You can do it in the, in the bottom of the well of the, what feels like the darkest sorrow and depression. And when you bring your attention to what is actually happening when you are breathing, the power of that communion will lift you up, will raise you out of um, sorrow and sorrowful darkness, because it's also nurturing darkness. It will raise you out of um, loneliness, and despair and isolation and self-involvement and greed and make the list right and materialism and disorientation and and it will put you back into context it will put mm -hmm. you back into relationship and the relationship is miraculous and magical and life-changing and you can experience it just by breathing exactly as you know the miracle of how you started the mm -hmm. show, the, this conversation. It's just the next step from that where you then, I've always said a witch is somebody who's paying attention. I love that. <laughs> to the presence of the divine, to the magic that's unfolding. Like you said, a miracle can be anything. And it, it can be something that you do um, actively to create a healthy, happy life with a spell, with a meditation, with your breath. Um, and it can be what you, what, what you do to receive uh, the magic that's already going on. Mm -hmm. yeah, when you ask for a sign, when you ask for direction, when you ask for a revelation, when you ask, when you know when you ask for help um the web is woven to support and sustain us and i think that the spiritual praxis whatever wherever you find it the purpose of it is to get that blindfold off and to bring you back into a relationship with it and once that relationship is forged the flow starts it doesn't mean that we don't forget mm -hmm distracted or have heartbreak and struggle because we do because mm -hmm. in part because of the culture we've created and in part because of the time in which we live but i do think that we're here for a purpose we're we're the people listening to this show you myself diane burke you know this this extraordinary pantheon of miraculous magical beings 
I've been saying for a, a while now, the world needs her witches. And she needs us to wake up to the wise one within ourselves, to the one who knows that the world is full of magic. And so are we. She needs us to come home. She needs us to, witches have always been healers, right? They've been midwives. They've been the ones who know about the medicine of plants and places of power and energies and how to work with them and how to, you know, how to heal. And it's time for us. We have to heal. I love that, that when you say that, it just feels like that's the truth. When you say the earth, the world needs her witches, I'm like, oh, there's something so true about that. And why do you say, so that people who may not understand that it's so important for women to connect with the energy of the earth, to really connect to their spiritual power? Why is that? Where do I start, right? <laughs> well, well, Cause every, we whenever I see the definite, like when I was reading your books, I'm like, everything you're talking about just seems like this is just how women are. It just seems normal. And yet we have this, you know, word that's been turned into something fearful, like, oh, which, and it really just is like when you're naturally being who you are as a healer, as a spiritual person, this is just what you do. Exactly. And when people start, when they discover, you know, when they discover witcha, when they discover the craft of the wise, um, that's what they say. They say, oh my gosh, I I knew this all along. I didn't know how. Right. I didn't know, you know, how to cast a circle and what happens when you energetically when you do that. I didn't know the practices. I didn't know how to journey with my drum behind me. Right. I didn't know how to do these things. So I need to learn. It's a craft or things to learn. But my my being resonated immediately with all of it because. I knew it to be true. I knew it to be so. My instinct, my intuition, my natural being said yes. That all of it affirmed my spirit, affirmed the embodiment of my spirit. You know, it affirmed my purpose. It affirmed what I already knew to be true. So the, I mean, what's the problem? Well, it started started 5,000 years ago, right? With the beginning of patriarchal religions that um, oppressed women. I mean, mm -hmm. I hate to say it, but it was true in Judaism where you know God had a wife initially and women were priestesses and, and they were kahonet, and, right? But but the, it was the warrior tribe of the Israelites who took over and it was all about, then it was only about Yahweh. It was only about Yahweh or no way, you know? <laughs> <laughs> no way i love that <laughs> right then you had the christian who had mary who looks so much you know who you see the the lunar crown that was worn by isis the continuity is there yep. the black Madonna, that's the sacred sites i mean yep got Br saint bridget who was the, the goddess i mean it's endless the it's endless the yeah themselves right but the worst of it began in the late 1400s at, as the um, Inquisition against the Jews was ending, and um, and there had been there was a movement towards capitalism. People were being moved off the land. Um, the nobilities across Europe were establishing their power. The lands were being enclosed. Uh, there were people who then were thrown off the lands, had no way to make a living. The medical profession started to grow. Women had been the primary healers, the midwives, the those who birthed babies, the traditional wisdom. And there was an increasing patriarchal hostility towards women. And there was a persecution that began in the late 1400s and it continued into the 1800s. The worst of it was in the 1500s. The worst of it was in Germany, mm. Scotland, Scotland. People think of it as, as the Catholic church and they certainly participated and had their role in it with the publication of the Mal Malaeus Maleficarum, the hammer of the witches, how to torture witches. Most of those persecuted, the numbers vary now. Um, there's sort of a general consensus that the records show between 50 and 100,000 people. But if there were records, you can imagine all those who were killed where there were no records kept. And it was a terrorist campaign against women. And it was also during that period that women lost all legal rights. They weren't allowed to leave the house without uh, being accompanied by a man. 
we, during the Middle Ages, women had power. They had businesses. They owned land. They could inherit. And all of that disappeared with capitalism and the movement off the land. And interesting, interesting, because people think it's just always been that way. It's like, no, wasn't always that way. It wasn't always that way at all. The, the change was brought about through a campaign of terror and then enforcement by laws and then repetition of the story. And the witcha, the wise one, was demonized. And if you if you look at the history of persecution, the images mm-hmm. uh, that were used against the Jews and the lies against the Jews were then moved over to the practitioners of the indigenous wisdom traditions of Europe. Yeah. The big nose, the pointy hat, the killing and eating babies, the consorting with Satan, the horns, the hooves, all of this horrible uh stuff this projection of one's own as gandhi said the only devils are the ones in our own hearts right mm-hmm. so these persecutions were the projection of uh of you know dark unresolved id issues mm-hmm. in a increasingly violent and patriarchal culture first onto Jews and then onto women, primarily women. And the witch became the hideous hag. And she stands, the stereotype stands between women and their power. Yep, totally. Which is why I took the word 40 years ago. I was like, oh no, (laughs) not gonna continue. This is outrageous. The witch is the stereotype of a patriarchal culture is fear, the projected fear of women's spirituality, of women's spiritual power, of Mm -hmm. women's capacity to give birth, of their wisdom, of their innate, intuitive, instinctual wisdom, as you said, what they know to be true, the spiritual wisdom they know to be true in their bodies. And a lot of our wisdom are blood mysteries, the the menstrual mysteries, were lost, the healing powers were lost, the working with energy was lost. Our, the witch trauma, the witch wound is one reason that women today are, it's why you're afraid to go into the parking lot at night mm. to get your car. It's why women have been afraid to raise their hand in class. It's it's why women have been afraid to call themselves witches. The minute Hillary Clinton appeared on the stage, the trolls depicted her on online. Yep. The green face and a pointy hat like Margaret Hamilton in The Wizard of Oz. Yep. The minute she opened her mouth, yep. it humiliated her by calling her a witch. Mm-hmm. So when does it stop? It stops when we say it stops. So I know a big piece of your work is helping people, helping women to reclaim this wisdom and to reclaim the very natural connection to the earth and to learn how to, to do this as a practice. So tell us a little bit about how you help people to do that. And if people wanted to learn more about how to work with you, tell us Phyllis, what you got? Well, I I kind of wandered off your question, which was why do women need the earth, right? The way we treated women is the way we've treated the earth. I know I can see it. Yep. The feminine energy, whether it's the cows or whatever, it's like, I see the same thing. It's all about control and yeah, domination. You exist for our gratification. You exist for our power. You exist for our pleasure. You exist for our wealth. You exist for us, right? And we're all waking up to the fact that that has, that's brought us to the brink of extinction, right? Um, It's unhealthy for men as it and for me, yeah, you know, both. Yep. For non-binary. It's unhealthy for the, for us as humans and it's incredibly unhealthy for the planet. Um so yeah, my teaching is um uh, a it is about nature's magic. It's about the about what the tools and the techniques are um for bringing yourself into harmony with the natural world. Uh some of it is as simple as going into nature. It's not, none of this is complicated. In fact, 
Um, but there is an art and a craft to it. There's ancient wisdom. There are ways um, like shamanic journeying, like casting a circle, ways of invoking the goddess, ways of crafting, working with the energies of creation, with the seasonal energies around the holy days that we call Sabbaths and working with that seasonal wisdom and bringing oneself into harmony, working with the energies of the moon that wax and wane, just like women's bodies, right? Um, and the mysteries embodied uh, by us by and reflected back to us. And the, I've always said that the moon is a mirror in which women can see the goddess in themselves. Mm, beautiful. Um, yeah. So that's what my writing is about. That's the, the new book that, that you were talking about, Spells for Living Well, which is the Witch's Wisdom Tarot deck, which was created with my wonderful dear friend and artist, Danielle Barlow. Mm. We every card and asked what is it the world needs to know what is witch's wisdom and it was the earth that spoke to us the spirit of the earth of mother earth and the plants and um recognized our wounds and also showed us how to heal mm -hmm. uh, and offers like a daily you know every engagement with the deck is a daily miracle a manifestation of magic and i'm doing a um I don't really like to call it a master, we'll call it mistress, <laughs> a master class in, in the, uh, the first round is the structural work of how to cast a circle, how to work with the four elements to work with air, fire, water, and earth to learn the lessons and receive the blessings that they mm -hmm. have to see how we are nature because we are a part of nature. And so nature has wisdom for us, mm -hmm. not only about quote itself, the world in which we live, but about ourselves okay? um, and their spiritual lessons. Interestingly, they're practical, but they're spiritual. So how to work, how to make magic with each of the elements, Beautiful. Um, how to cast a circle, as an on, basically when one casts a circle, you're invoking the divine feminine. Mm -hmm. Cast a circle and how to work with energy. One of the things that we've, I think that we've that we've suffered greatly from is how much we live in our heads. Mm -hmm. Isol isolated in our heads. As you said, like people think of magic as setting an intention. Mm -hmm. It is, but it's also raising energy. It's opening the heart. And contacting our desire right? and it is working physically um with the natural world grounding with the earth breathing with the trees dancing with the fire of the sun um, and feeling how our spirit comes to life in our bodies and through our lives and learning how to um invoke the divine receive the divine the second part uh, so the first part I think of is wand magic, which are these active sort of, I create a circle, I call and work with the elements, I work with them, I right. create magic and cast spells with them. And then the second part is the divine feminine. It's the grail magic. It's how we open ourselves and, and use divination as a means of speaking with the sacred mm -hmm. and asking questions, seeking answers, how we journey in order to alter our and open our consciousness and move into realms yeah. of spirit. Beautiful. Um, how we learn to work with spirits, to craft ritual, once again, to make magic, to create miracles. Um, and to so, find a place in our lives and, and yeah. see the path to the fulfillment of that purpose. Love it. So if they want to learn about the courses that you have coming up, they can just go to your website, right? phyllisscarat.com. Yes, and I have for them a spell for living well. Oh, great. I wanted to do a gift. And, I, you know, I want to give everybody everything. But this was the, the book is called Spells for Living Well. And it sort of culminates in this really, really beautiful, joyful, incredibly easy to do spell. A spell is a spiritual practice, as a way of opening ourselves to the spirit in the world around us mm -hmm. and ourselves. And it works with the very first spell we all learned as a child to make a wish upon a star. Oh, sweet. Yeah. And so it, it, if they go to my website, they'll find it at, um, I guess it's backslash. It says, well, 
which I well, know. okay. Backslash. Well, I'll put that in the show notes so that people know where they can get that, that free gift. Thank you so much. Oh, I feel like I could talk to you forever, but I know we need to wind up our, our time today. Thank you so much for, for being here and for spending your time and just sharing your wisdom, which obviously is such a depth of wisdom here with you. So thank you. Thank you for all your work and for answering the call of the goddess. There's a witch in every woman I know and in lots of everyone else as well. And she just needs, uh, she just needs to take the blindfold off and see the sacred in herself uh, and in the world around her. And when you do that, the magic just flows, the magic flows and the world needs her witches. So welcome home, witches. <laughs> Beautiful. It was, it was a joy talking with you. And I know I feel the same way. We could talk for hours and we should. We should. We totally should. Absolutely. And, let's yeah. make that. Let's make that intention. Thank, thank you, you. Thank you. Thank so you. beautiful. All right, my friend, thank you once again for listening to the Magnify Your Miracles podcast. If you did enjoy this episode, please feel free to share it with your friends on social media, anyone you know who really needs this powerful wisdom to really help them connect back in with the magic within themselves. As always, remember that the key to magnifying your miracles is to know that your miracle is already here. God bless you, my friend. Thank you so much. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.